Welcome back to Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. You know, Reason for Truth, where the truth comes first, the reasons come last, but where we're always and constantly learning. We stop learning, we stop teaching. We at least stop teaching well. So today I want to teach and learn about three simple words, man. I'm talking about three highly censored words that can get you arrested in communist China. Here's why. And what I would look at that for a couple reasons, because hopefully that's not going to come here into other countries in the West, right? Article here is May 11th, 2022. Again, it's titled literally three highly censored words that can get you arrested in communist China. And here's why. May 11th, 2022. This is by the Epoch Times. It looks like by a staff. So I don't think they want to use the name of the person. They might come after them. This is what the article says. Truthfulness, <laughs> compassion, and tolerance. Oh my gosh. No wonder why we've been booted out of China. Reason for truth. Truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance sound like the ideal principles for the world to follow. But in communist China, uttering these three words together stands to have you arrested. The ancient uh, meditation, the self-improvement system of Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, is a meditation practice based on the traditional values of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, which every conscientious person can easily relate to. I would agree. The peaceful practice rooted in the Buddhist tradition was relic, which, by the way, is the, the traditional religion of China. So the peaceful practice rooted in the Buddhist tradition was relatively unknown to the rest of the world until 1999, when the persecution of Falun Gong has been instigated by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Currently, it is practiced freely in over 80 countries. If you're getting confused as to why this is the traditional religion of Chinese. When you have the Communist Party, their religion is secular humanism or communism. And that's kind of how that goes. So you have communism versus this non-Christian belief. I'm not certain. I'm not an expert in Falun Gong, but evidently treats, uh, speaks in or it teaches and it follows principles that are that uh, that I guess go and fly in the face of what communist China wants you to understand. They want you to understand everything their way, in their communist way. Understandably, according, not agree, but that's understand what they're doing. According to Falun Gong's official website, people who practice this deeply rewarding spiritual path often experience dramatic health benefits, as well as newfound energy, mental clarity, and stress relief. Its teachings encourage learners to let go of unhealthy attachments as they strive to attune their lives to the underlying qualities of the universe truth compassion and forbearance the website states interesting you can see why that's appealing to many people by the way uh i would say go to the bible get you can find jesus the truth the life and the way that's eternal and that's really true but this is at least not as bad as the ccp would have it um, however in the last two decades due to the persecution of the chinese police relentless hunt for arresting more falun gong practitioners the the practice uh Main tenets of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance have become highly sensitive and censored words. Saying these words together over the phone can trigger the CCP, who's tracking system, alerting the police who can then access this speaking GPS coordinates and come rushing out to arrest them. So in other words, they're, they pick up on keywords, a computer, boom, it goes there, they see what you said, they don't care, they come and arrest you. No matter where you're at, in your car, your home, you're eating lunch. So if people were to utter these words in public in China, they not only stand to be arrested, but also tortured, detained for long periods, or even up to having their organs forcibly harvested. Pretty sad. Now, the article goes on to say it's some other things, which I'm not going to go into the whole article. But bottom line is the practice of Falun Gong is free of charge and available to anybody who wants it is what they're saying. And it's helping to help people get better moral lives or people mental st- position, but with benefits to the body, such as improved health, becoming more spiritually significant improvement in moral values, I guess you can go from bad to better, as I'm thinking. But the universal principles of universal truth, compassion, and tolerance are certain to go down in history as defining values for future mankind. I think you bottom line is you're going to find that in the church for sure. But this leads us to the question as to what is truth? Truth is what corresponds to reality. Right, it's saying it the way it is, and it is what is. It's not what we think it is, not what we sense it is, what what we smell it is. We could smell something like in apple pie, and it should be an air freshener of an apple pie, right? So truth is what is. It's what corresponds to reality. So that's the first principle, of Falun Gong, is truthfulness. The second one is compassion. Now, if we want to look at the meaning or the definition of compassion, I just looked it up in the. Uh, 
uh, in the dictionary here online and uh, it, from the greatgood.berkeley at edu in california they say compassion literally means to suffer together right among emotion researchers it's defined as the feeling that arises when you're confronted with another suffering and feel motivated to uh, relieve the suffering compassion is not the same and empathy is as uh, altruism though the concepts are related that's interesting. The question is, I wonder what the um, what does the Bible say about what is compassion? So uh, the biblical definition here that we have uh, is, is is similar but different, right? Now, what does the Bible say about compassion? Well, <clears throat> we want to look at some verses here. Uh, we got Isaiah thirty eighteen says, "Yes, the Lord longs to be gracious to you; therefore, He will rise up and show you compassion." Then we have Mark. Uh, 634 it says when jesus landed and saw a large crowd he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd so he began to teach them many things now according to biblestudytools.com this is what they say is the definition of compassion okay this is important and it says that the compassion that human disposition that fuels acts of kindness and mercy compassion a form of love is aroused within us when we are confronted to those who suffer or are vulnerable Compassion often produces actions to alleviate the suffering, but sometimes uh, geographical distances or lack of means prevent people from acting upon their compassionate feelings. Compassion is not a uniquely Christian response to suffering, Exodus 2, 6, Luke 10, and even though Christians have unique reasons for nurturing their, their compassionate uh, dispositions. It goes into a lot more there. But I would say that the biblical view of compassion is similar to that of Berkeley's, but I would say it's also very different, right? And it's different in the sense that it uh, it doesn't say you want to be put yourself in a position of suffering with them. You're there to help eliminate them. If you, if you put yourself in a position of just strictly suffering, you know what's going to happen? You're going to end up not being able to help them. So that's my take on compassion compassion. I think the biblical view of compassion is much more effective, and it's certainly truthful, right? It's God's word, the truth. Lastly, I want to look at their third value, right, which is tolerance. Oh my gosh. I think in today's world, we have to really look at what tolerance is. Um, tolerance today is really, by many, intolerance. Tolerance used to be, listen, you tolerated people you disagree with. Now tolerance is more or less Mm, something that is a, it's, you see that in social media, right? Tolerance is not necessarily divided or distributed uh, distributed equally. It's saying, hey, you have to be tolerant of me, but I don't have to be tolerant of you. So the word of tolerance, tolerance has been greatly mis, uh, misrepresented and distorted. On the site, thebriefing.com.au, it's giving a biblical, talk about biblical tolerance. A biblical word for tolerance is patience. Within the Bible, patience is not just passively waiting but enduring, suffering without retaliation. Tolerance is one of the modern world's most highest values, yet the Bible hardly ever uses the word. A search for the in accordance will re not reveal much. Bible dictionaries have no articles on the topics for the most part, and thus hard to see where the Bible teaches tolerance, let alone approves it from its most ideal purpose. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, tolerance says the ability or willingness to tolerate something in particular, the existence of opinions or behaviors that one does not necessarily agree with, the tolerance of corruption. And it also said the capacity, like the biblical definition, the capacity to endure continued sub, uh, subject, uh, subjection to something, especially a drug, transplant, antigen, or environment con environmental conditions without adverse reaction. Now, I would say that, you know, it. I would say this is both of them hold a lot of truth certainly the biblical one does i would also say that in reality secretively or unspoken tolerance has been redefined to say you have to be tolerant of me i don't have to be tolerant of you i wrote a book called uh right for you but not for me a response to moral relativism I, where i address this in great detail you can get that on amazon.com or at equippedacademy.com want to check that out but i'm not here to talk about the falun gong uh, religion. I'm here to talk about, hey, how are we to act in the world that is just upside down? And uh, what words do we have to say that might be offensive to other people? Now, the Bible has a lot of scriptures, a lot about speaking the truth. Let's first look at John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Proverbs 12, 22 says, lying lips. Aha. 
are an abomination of the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. Now I want to close with looking at Luke 19. And you want to pick it up here right about 1940X, so we'll go back to 30. It says, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I like that. Blessed is the king, that's the leader, who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees and crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. That's exactly what China is saying. And this is a response. I tell you, he replied, if you keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Bottom line is you can't suppress the truth, and the truth is God, truth is God's word. And that's my response to the suppression of anybody who says anything that's the truth. Even if it's not in the name of Jesus Christ, if it's the truth and it reflects God's truth, can't suppress it. So God's blessings to you. I hope you'll stand strong for the truth. Hope you'll be in the word of God, be in prayer for all the Chinese and even the Chinese government, even the CCP. Their hearts would turn back to God or turn to God and uh, certainly in the West here. So God's blessings to you. Make sure you subscribe, hit that alert bell. You don't miss any of these episodes. Stay strong, speak the truth. Because listen, rocks will cry out if not. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. This is your reason for truth for today. <music>